Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we're going to talk about one of the best no annual free credit cards that was just launched. But first, if you are new here, we're all about how to maximize the value of your credit cards, so how to get the most cash back, and also how to travel for free. If that sounds interesting, then subscribe to our channel, but let's get started. So with credit cards, you kind of fall into a few different camps. With most cards, you only really get value if you spend a lot of money on the card. And then here, we actually have a card where you don't actually need to spend that much at all every year, and you're still going to get a ton of value. The PenFed Pathfinder Rewards American Express card has no annual fee, and every year that you have the card, it gives you a $100 travel credit. There's a few other benefits as well, but we'll talk about them afterwards. And again, this card might seem familiar because it's very similar, if not kind of a clone, of the Travel Elite card by FNBO. So that was one of the cards I got really excited about last year before they kind of closed off applications. There were a few people who recently got mailers for it. So I got one that was a zero annual fee one. Mandy got one that was an annual fee one. So it's kind of interesting because I think they're kind of testing it. But if you do want a card like that, and even if you are just looking for a card that you get a ton of value from, I think this is a card that you should strongly consider. For whatever reason, they don't actually advertise the annual fee credit on their landing page. You actually have to click into the terms to see it. Reading through it, you get $100 per calendar year for airline incidentals. The fees need to be charged to the card, and it works for airlines such as American Airlines, Alaska, Delta, Frontier, JetBlue, Hawaiian, Spirit, Southwest, United, Allegiant, as well as Virgin America. You only get one travel credit per account, so if you do add authorized users, they can help you or they can use that incidental credit, but they will not get their own separate credit. Incidental fees include baggage, flight change, in-flight food and drink, airport lounge day passes, pet kennel fees, as well as phone reservation fees. They specifically mentioned that tickets, upgrades, point purchases, as well as gift cards and stuff like that don't count. Same thing with duty-free purchases, which I never thought would be an incidental, but again, I guess someone has thought that before. You'll get a credit for the charge two to four weeks after it happens. Incidental credits are kind of interesting just because there are some other issuers who have listed that gift cards do not count, but again, based off their system, it still goes through, it still gets refunded. So why is this valuable? So first off, you have a card that has no annual fee, and then you're getting a $100 credit. So all you really need to do is to keep the account alive, and you're getting $100 in value every single calendar year. As long as you're someone who flies at least once a year, I think you can get a ton of value from this. So again, when you fly, you can get drinks, you can get food, you can go to the lounge beforehand if you don't have a premium credit card and you just wanna to pay to go in. Or again, if you are someone who skis or maybe you're moving, baggage fees can start to cost a lot. I think some people will make the argument that, well, this card doesn't add that much value to me because I spend X amount of dollars. So for me, even myself, I'm considering getting it just because it's a free hundred dollars. I'm not going to put a lot of spend to this card. I'm going to use my Chase Sapphire Reserve as well as my Freedom and other cards. But for this card, all you really need to do, again, buy a banana, buy, do a grocery run once every two to three months on it, and you're going to keep the card alive and you're getting a hundred dollars. If you're someone who does not have a high income, or maybe you just don't spend a lot of money, then this card is perfect. As long as you travel that one time a year, you're going to gain value from it. And even if you don't, still getting it isn't really a bad thing. So if you know that you're not going to start traveling until two years down the line, if it becomes something like the FNBO card, where they don't really let other people apply for it, then by getting it now, you lock yourself in, and they're not going to change the terms likely. So it's a good thing. You're locking yourself in to a card that adds long-term value for you. One thing to consider with PenFed is that you do need to be a member in order to apply for their cards, but there are a few easy ways to qualify. The easiest way is to either be a prior or current person serving in the military, but you can also join some other associations for about $17, and that allows you to join PenFed. Voice for Troops is probably the easiest one, and it costs $17, and again, once you have that, you can join PenFed. As a side note, just because I know a few people are going to be wondering, this does not count towards American Express's cap for credit cards. So again, American Express caps you at four, five, or six credit cards, depending on your relationship and your score and some other factors. Since this is not issued directly by American Express, it will not count. And again, the four, five, six rule is only for credit cards and not charge cards. The card also gives you a $100 TSA pre-check credit or global entry credit every five years. 
You typically see this credit with high annual fee credit cards. So again, here, this is pretty useful if you don't see yourself getting one of those cards, or maybe you're someone who has a big family. And again, you just need those credits because you want to make sure everyone has TSA PreCheck or Global Entry. If you're a family of four who travels internationally pretty often, or even if you just travel domestically pretty often, having TSA PreCheck or having Global Entry is going to save a ton of time. Another side note, in case you don't know what those are, they allow you to skip the main line. So you know how when you go to the airport or when you come back to the US, the line is typically pretty long. There's basically a fast track line for you. There is a process to it, but again, I think it's pretty worthwhile. This card has a 25,000 point signup bonus after $2,500 is spent. And it's kind of funny because we typically talk about the signup bonus first, but if a card like this, it's not really the main issue. We're looking at the long-term value of the card, so this isn't too bad, but even if you don't hit it, you're not missing out on too much. These points are worth about 0.9 cents per point towards airfare and about 1.2 cents per point towards hotels. You can also redeem them for gift cards for about 0.85 cents per point. If you use it towards airfare, it's worth $225. Towards hotels, it's about $300. Towards gift cards, about $213. Given all of this, I think hotels are probably going to be the best bets, but again, it just really depends on you. And again, if you have a lot of Hotels.com gift cards like me, then maybe you end up using this towards airfare. The card also earns 3x points back on all travel purchases if you're a regular member, and if you are a PenFed Honors Advantage member, then you're going to earn 4x points back. In order to be an Honors member, you either need to be a military member or you need to hold the Access America checking accounts. If you're someone looking to use the points towards hotels, then I think this card might be worthwhile as your main travel card in terms of the spend to maximize the points. But again, I think it just depends on you and what you're looking to maximize for, as well as if you do go to a specific hotel chain a lot, then getting that card is typically going to give you the best value. There's a lot of factors, so it really depends. Your mileage may vary. There's also a 0% balance transfer offer for 12 months with a 3% balance transfer fee. I'm typically not a fan of balance transfers just because I think it gets people into debt more often than not, but again, if you need it, it's there. Overall, I think this card is pretty solid and I think it's very worthwhile to get, especially if you value that $100 in free value. Even if you're someone who doesn't have baggage fees, I think the fact that you can buy lounge access for a day isn't a bad decision. And again, I think that might be a good way for you to test whether you're actually getting value from other lounge cards when we're talking about premium credit cards. Again, I don't see any risk just because you're not paying an annual fee. If you're looking to apply for any new cards, a really easy way to support our channel is apply using the links on our site. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on this card and do you think they're going to stop letting people apply given how good it seems. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And if you know anyone else who'd benefit from this card, I'd strongly recommend sharing it just because, again, we don't know if they're going to close applications. It seems a bit too good. I don't see them downgrading it, but at the same time, I can see them closing applications. Hope you guys liked it. See you next time.